Hi guys. So today what we're going to do is we're going to look at quadratic inequalities. So to start, we're going to look at how to graph them, um, and then we're going to look at how to solve them algebraically, which is going to take up more of the time. So in order to graph quadratic inequalities, it's really very similar to graphing uh, inequalities of lines. Uh, equal to or any of our less than or equal to or greater than or equal to are going to be solid lines. If it's not or equal to, it's going to be that dashed or dotted line. So to start, we'll go ahead and just graph this first parabola. All right, so look at your transformations. The vertex here is 2, 5. It's been reflected over the x-axis. It's been compressed by 1 half. So that normal pattern, so typically from 2, 5, the way we'd move is right 1, up 1, right 2, up 4, right 3, up 9, right 4, up 16. That's the normal parent function pattern. But because it's been compressed and reflected, that's our new way that we're moving from the vertex. So from the vertex, I'll go right 1 and down a half, right 2 and down 2. Uh, right 4 and down 8 will be another good point. And then again, we'll have those same points just on the other side because of that axis of symmetry. And then because this is less than, um, not or equal to, we're going to use that dashed or dotted line to sketch our parabola. All right, so now with the shading. Uh, very similar to the way that we shaded uh, with our lines, okay, with inequalities, you shaded above if it was greater, you shaded below if it was less than. Kind of the easy way to remember that is if you write the word below, okay, it kind of shows you that less than symbol. But with a line, we shaded above or below the line. Well, what we need to kind of consider here really is where the vertex is. So if the vertex, if below the vertex is inside the parabola, then we're going to shade inside the parabola. If below the vertex is outside the parabola, we're going to shade outside the parabola. So not just the area that's below it. And you'll see that here in this next example. All right, so let's go ahead and graph this one. So we can either write this in vertex form by completing the square, or we can find the vertex using negative b over 2a and plugging that value in. I'll go ahead and do completing the square, though, just for review. So I'd factor out that 2. All right, the value that's going to go in that blank, 2, negative 2 divided by 2 squared is 1. But I'm not going to subtract 1. I have to do 2 times 1. So this becomes 2, x minus 1 squared minus 1. So my vertex here is 1, negative 1. All right, this graph has been stretched vertically by a factor of 2. So where we'll move from the vertex, normal parent function pattern, Multiply everything, multiply those y values though by 2. So from the vertex, right 1 up 2, and then right 2 up 8. Barely fit on my graph. This is or equal to, so it is going to be a solid line. All right, so now in this case, it says y is less than, so we're going to shade below the vertex. Now, that doesn't mean just shade below the vertex, okay? It means shade the area that is below the vertex. In this case, what's below the vertex is outside the parabola. So we're shading outside our parabola. So everything outside here is our solution. All right, so now let's look at these algebraically. So in order to solve these algebraically, we're going to use something called a sign chart. Okay, and I mean sign like positive negative sign, not like the sign that you did last year in geometry. All right, so by the sign chart, what I mean is the first thing we're going to do is find our zeros. So for all of these, it's really extra practice in solving quadratics. So the first thing we're going to do, if it's not already, set it equal to zero, and then find your zeros. So in this case, this first one is already equal to zero, and we can factor. Okay, what multiplies to negative four and adds to negative three would be negative four and one. Once we know our zeros, we're going to mark those on a number line. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pick some test points. Now, the process that we're using here, we are going to use in later units. So um, even though we'll see some patterns here, you guys will notice, it's still important to understand this process because we're going to use it again in some future units. So what we have here, basically, is we're going to figure out where this graph is positive and negative. Um, these two points that are marked are the two zeros. Well, what we know is every x value to the left of negative 1 is going to be either positive or negative. It can't change between positive and negative because it would have to cross the x-axis. And the only zero that I have right now over here is negative 1. So if something over here is positive, everything over here is positive. If something over here is negative, everything over there is negative. So what we do is we pick a test point that falls in this region. 
It can be any number that you want, okay? It could be negative two, it could be negative a thousand. They're going to have the same positive or negative sign. So I'll just go ahead and pick negative two. That's my test point. If I take negative two and I plug it in for x, I don't need to know exactly what that value is. All I need to know is, is this going to give me a positive or a negative number? Because whichever one it gives me, that's going to be true for everything that's on this side of my inequality. So if I plug in negative two, negative two minus four is a negative number. Negative two plus one is also a negative number. Those two things are being multiplied together and a negative times a negative is always gonna give me a positive. So what that means is that everything to the left of negative one is a positive number. And again, I could pick any number to the left of negative one. Okay, I could pick negative seven. Negative seven minus four is a negative. Negative seven plus one is a negative, and a negative times a negative is a positive. Okay, you're gonna keep getting that same answer. So now we go to our next region, somewhere in between negative one and four. Okay, so I'm gonna pick any test point that falls in that region. Let's pick zero. Okay, if I plug in zero for x, zero minus four is a negative number. Zero plus one is a positive number, and a negative times a positive is always gonna work out to be a negative. So that means everything in that in-between region is going to be negative. There's not gonna be any positives because if there's one negative down here, the only way to go to the positives is to cross the x-axis. And I don't cross the x-axis again until I get to four. So now let's look at this last, last test region, all right, four. So I can pick anything to the right of four. Okay, I'm gonna pick 100, because again, it could be anything. If I plug in 100, 100 minus four is a positive number. 100 plus one is a positive number, and a positive times a positive is positive. So now my sign chart is filled in. This tells me where this graph is positive and negative. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this chart to answer my question. The original question wanted to know, when is this inequality less than or equal to zero? Less than or equal to zero means it's negative. So we're trying to figure out where is this graph negative? Well, that graph is negative in this region right here. So we're gonna write our final answer in interval notation. So from negative one to four. Because it's or equal to, we're gonna use brackets. All right, let's look at our next one. Again, first step, set it equal to zero and find the zeros. So I'm gonna rewrite this. And then this question can factor, okay? There's something that multiplies to negative 20 and adds to negative 10. I'm gonna go ahead and do this just with guess and check because it's a little bit faster because I've got some prime numbers. So two X and X. And then these numbers here, we know they have to multiply to a negative 10, okay? So I just need to check those middles. I need those middles to add to a negative one. So I'm gonna use five and two. I'll make this one five and this one two because that's gonna give me five X and four X. One of them has to be positive and one of them has to be negative in order to get this negative because I want it to be a negative one in the middle, then I'm gonna make that one negative and that one positive. So that gives me 2x squared minus 10, and then a minus 5x plus 4x in the middle. Now again, um, you don't have to go through this this way. If you want to go through the AC and the split the middle, you are welcome to do that. Um, just showing that process as well in case uh, you guys are getting a little faster at some of these. All right, so now we know our zeros, negative 2 and 5 over 2. So now let's pick some test points to plug in. So let's pick something in this region here to the left of negative two. All right, so negative three. Two times negative three minus five is a negative number. Negative three plus two is a negative number and a negative times a negative is in fact a positive. So this region is positive. Okay, something in this region like zero. Two times zero minus five is a negative. Zero plus two is a positive. A negative times a positive is negative. All right, let's go to the next one. Something to the right of five over two. Again, let's do 100. Okay, two times 100 minus five is a positive. 100 plus two is a positive. Positive times a positive is overall going to be positive. So this region is positive. Now let's answer the original question. It wants to know when this quadratic is greater than zero. So when that quadratic is positive. The positive regions here 
from negative infinity to negative 2. We need to use a parenthesis because it doesn't actually touch that point. And then it continues from 5 over 2 to infinity. And that's our region. Now you'll probably notice some patterns here, okay? This one went positive, negative, positive. This one went positive, negative, positive. Kind of an easier way to help you guys realize this. Um, it's good to know how to test, plug in those test points, because again, we're gonna use that later on this year. But what you might notice, this is the same shape as the graph, okay? This graph, if you were to sketch it, um, this is a zero and this is a zero. This graph opens up, it's a positive A value. Since it opens up, your graph is gonna look something like this. Same thing over here. So this graph is positive until that x value, positive after that x value. So knowing the shape of that graph can help you figure out these sign charts a little easier. All right, let's look at another one. Now this is one you gotta be careful on, okay? Because what you might wanna try and do is you might just say, well, let's square root, hey, x is greater than or equal to five. That's not my answer. The reason that's not my answer is because the square root of x squared is not actually x. It may seem like it's x, but it technically isn't. Actually, the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. Because if you think about it, let's say this was just x squared equals 25. The answer for x is not just 5. The answer to x is also negative 5. So to make this easier than having to deal with those absolute values, what we're going to do is we're just going to do the same process. Set it equal to 0. Now this is the difference of squares, which is easy to factor. I know where my zeros are. This graph opens up, it's a positive A value, which means this shape of this graph, it's gonna be positive, negative, and positive. Again, I can pick those test points if I wanna be sure, but I know what this graph's gonna look like. If you wanna pick a test point, plug in zero just to see, zero minus five is negative, zero plus five is positive, negative times a positive is in fact a negative. Okay, you can do that for all those points to double check if you want. Look at your original question. It wants to know when it's greater than or equal to zero. So we're listing the positive intervals. So negative infinity to negative five and five to infinity. Brackets because it's or equal to. All right, going on to the next one. X squared plus four X minus three. Now in this case, um, this is something that does not factor. Uh, so what I'm gonna need to do now, if it was plus 3, then it would factor. Uh, but this one's not going to factor. So I'm going to use the quadratic formula or completing the square. It's up to you. We'll do x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I get negative 4 plus or minus. Um, that's going to be 16 plus 12, which is 28. Remember, at this point, we cannot simplify this. All right, so we need to simplify the square root. That becomes 2 root 7. And now, since both of these are able to be simplified, we can. That becomes negative 2 plus or minus root 7. So I have negative 2 plus root 7. Oops, sorry. Minus root 7 is going to be smaller. I should put that one first. There we go. Negative 2 minus root 7 and negative 2 plus root 7, and that looks like a 2. All right, so if I would again pick those test points and plug them in, um, you can do that, but since it's kind of hard to tell where negative 2 minus root 7 and negative 2 plus root 7 are, this is why it's helpful to understand what the graph looks like. Okay, again, this graph opens up. It's a positive A value. The graph would look something like this, so it's positive, negative, and positive. Original question wants to know when it's negative. That negative region does not have parentheses. Sorry, does have parentheses because it's not equal to. And that's the negative region. All right, we're just going to do a couple more. Look at a couple specific cases. All right, let's try this next one. Again, first step, get a set it equal to zero. So negative x squared plus 5x plus 14 is less than zero. So in order to factor this, there's a couple different things you can do. To me, I think it's easier to just go ahead and factor out that negative from all three terms. I think that makes it easier to factor. You don't have to do it that way, but to me it's a lot easier because now I can see, hey, this is going to be x minus 7 and x plus 2. All right, so my zeros are negative 2 and 7. 
But this time, because of that negative out there, what that means is if I were to sketch this graph, that A value is negative. This graph is going to open down, which means this graph is going to be negative, positive, negative. Original question wants to know when it's negative. So that negative region, negative infinity to negative 2, and then 7 to infinity. Another way you could work this out from the very beginning, you could just rewrite it as and move out everything over here to the right side. So you could just make this uh, 0 is greater than... Sorry, we're moving everything. 0 is less than x squared minus 5x minus 14. So you could work it out this way. Okay, and then your group sign chart would look different. But your answer would be, and again, this time now looking for the positive region, which would be positive, negative, positive. Uh, you'd still get the same answer in the end. So that's just a different way that you could work that out if you wanted to. But I wanted to show you guys one with a negative A value so you could see that flip sign. All right, looking at the next one. Again, this one does not factor, so let's either complete the square or do quadratic formula. Um, I'll go ahead and do completing the square this time. So x squared plus 2x plus blank. Move that 6 over. I'm going to add a 1 to both sides. So x plus 1 squared is equal to negative 5. Well, you guys can tell at this point, when you square root this, I'm going to get the square root of negative 5, which means that there are no real solutions. Now, the nice thing about this, the nice thing about this uh, is that you don't need to find imaginary solutions, okay? We're trying to answer, when is this graph above the x-axis, okay? That's what it's saying. When is this graph greater than 0? When is that graph positive? By getting negative uh, answers or square root of negatives, that's telling us there's no real solutions. That's telling us this graph has no x-intercepts. So let's think about what this graph looks like. If there's no x-intercepts, that means that this graph opens up. Okay, it opens up. It doesn't cross the x-axis. So now we can answer our question. We want to know when this graph is positive. Well, this graph is always positive. There's no x-intercepts and it opens up. It doesn't matter where it is. Okay, it can be anywhere over there. But wherever it is, it's always going to be positive. So this answer is all real numbers. All right, last two. Again, just kind of looking at some special cases here. So on this next one again, first thing, set it equal to zero. All right, so then at this point, you know that uh, that factors into x minus 4 squared. Sorry, I did that kind of quick. That is a perfect square trinomial, which means there's only one zero. Your only zero is 4. Okay, that's also where your vertex would be. So again, if you want to pick some test points, you can. Let's say I pick some test point in this region, like a negative 7. Negative 7 minus 4 is a negative number, but a negative number squared is a positive. Pick some number in this region. Okay, 10. 10 minus 4 squared. That's also going to be positive. But everywhere on this graph is not positive. So this answer is actually not going to be all real numbers because when x equals 4, it's 0. And 0 is not a positive number. It wants to know when this graph is greater than 0. So this graph is greater than 0 from negative infinity to 4, and then again from 4 to infinity. Now if this was greater than or equal to, then it would be all real numbers. All right, last one. So again, here, uh, we can. this one is not going to factor. So we can do completing the square or quadratic formula. To me, this is an easier quadratic formula question because you've got an odd number, an a value, and those are just easier with quadratic formula. So negative 3 plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And you'll notice over here, this is going to be 9 minus, let's see, that's 8 times 7 minus 56. That's going to be a negative number. Okay, we don't even know what, we don't need to know what the value is. Again, we're not finding imaginary solutions. We're just trying to say, when is this graph greater than or equal to 0? What we know right now, okay, is that this graph has no x-intercepts. There are no real solutions. We also know that the a value is negative. That means that this graph is going to open down. 
Well, if it's going to open down and not cross the x-axis, it has to be somewhere down here. That means that that graph is always going to be negative. The entire graph is going to be negative for every x value. Well, if I want to know when this graph is positive, that means that there are no real solutions. All right, so that is it for quadratic inequalities. As you guys can see, this is really a lot of review on solving quadratics. Um, and then just that extra step of plotting those zeros and figuring out where your graph is positive and negative.